Ibos as they open up to the cameras with heartbreaking tales of trauma and worsening health condition. <laughs> What did that, that, uh, if the CID boss can make a statement like this, then I think she should resign because she's not on top of her job. This is Top Story with Evans Mensa. And Top Story is always brought to you by Born Your Success, our passion. Also brought to you by Gas and Cement, the nation builder. Vodafone, the future is exciting, ready. And nationwide health insurance, your healthcare family. <laughs> Well, that is one mother's reaction to the CID boss, COP Mami Tewado Dankwa, who this week finally admitted the police did not know the whereabouts of the three missing tardy girls after all. Just a few weeks back, the CID boss addressed the nation, declaring the police have finally located the girls and assured they will be brought back home safely. Together with the BNI, we've worked very well and currently we know where the girls are. Well, the reaction back then by the families of the missing girls to this assurance was one of hope and expectation. Just listen to mother of Ruth Lovequasing, who has been gone for nearly 300 days. And she was reacting shortly after the assurance was given by the CID boss. I thank the police service for this news. This is the first time they've come out with an assurance like this. I'm looking forward to seeing all the three children soon. Well, that was when uh, she put out the assurance. And the assurance was essentially that we found the girls and we know where they are and will bring them back home safely. Well, as it turned out, the CID boss's assurance that they finally know where the girls are was simply not true. It took a month for her to finally admit. I made those comments because I wanted to assure the people and the families that we were working hard and we had made progress. From when I know you wanted that, maybe I just said any pantias ye ye and on which you want to see one. But people misunderstood me. Now, mother of one of the missing girls, you heard earlier, Ruth Love Quasing, who was grateful for the initial assurance, is now devastated to hear that the CID does not know her daughter's location after all. <laughs> <laughs> well, the families are now demanding the resignation of the CID boss. Today, uh, former Deputy Central Regional Minister and MP for Agona East, uh, Queenstar Pukwa uh, uh, Sawyer, uh, visited the uh, affected families. My colleague in Italia was there and joins us live on the line. Ina, uh, we heard the tears of the mother of uh, missing Ruth Love Quasing. What we did not hear, though, is a story of her state of health, which she says has deteriorated since her daughter was kidnapped. Tell us more. Hello, Ina, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Yes, I mean, we heard the, we heard the tears of Ruth Loquason's mother, but what we did not hear is the tale that she told today of her deteriorating health. Tell us more. Yes, hello. So, um, Ruth Loquason's mother, Comfort Ahin, brought out about eight different drugs basically for her high uh, blood pressure, for, um, which basically is about the emotions and trauma she's going through. This that drugs that have been given to her by doctors. 
Um, apparently, two days ago, she was admitted at the hospital during the Mother's Day celebration because basically, it's like, it's Mother's Day, she's expecting her daughter to be around. It's been over one month since she had that. They should keep on keeping on, and she cannot see her daughter, any sign of her daughter. She has not been able to have a good sleep since her daughter was kidnapped. Evan, it will interest you to know that uh, her mother told me that every night or uh, every time when she hears a beep of a car, she feels probably someone is coming to drop her daughter in front of her house or the daughter is coming home. She wakes up at dawn only to find out that it is just a car passing by. And this is affecting her medically. Even when we have seen her today, her temperature was so hot, but I'm not a medical expert. So what really was wrong, but from how she was looking and the way she was able to pick her drug from the room and then show it on us that we, the media, should take a look at it. If she look at her taking eight drugs a day and she takes them from morning to evening. So that was it, Evan. And, and I, I watched that footage in which uh, she was displaying the medication, the cocktail of medications that she's been taking. And she was showing it uh, to the to journalists uh, who, who had visited her today. But I understand some of the families are now angry about the latest pronouncements by the CID boss and are demanding that she resigns. Sure, uh, the families are really um, not happy with this pronouncement. Um, they told me they kind of Today he has this, and then tomorrow they hear another thing. Let's take a listen to some of them. If the CID boss can make a statement like this, then I think she should resign because she's not on top of her job. So, so that that's what they want there, and and they've made that point clear today. Uh, but you went to visit the families where the former Deputy Central Regional Minister and MP for Agona East, Quinkster Pokwa Sawyer. Why was she there? Basically, she she told me that um, every time she watched uh, the Bring Back Our Party Girls campaign or join me, she feels very bad. She feels emotional, and she thinks that as a mother, she has to come there. Probably after her presence, uh, there will be a miraculous. It isn't that I want to, I mean, I want to show off with the media or anything. It is firstly because I am, I am, I am moved. And every time I watch Joy News at 7 o'clock, you guys do. You show it, you would break and then you show, bring up back our tardy girls. And I'm always so moved. Sometimes I cry because I have a daughter at 19 years. So I've just been praying over it. Then I gathered the courage with the help of Sheltering Group. This is an NGO that supports me whenever I'm doing anything. So we decided to come and visit them. And then I am here not to ask CID any question. I am not fighting President Ekufado, not the gender minister, nobody. My dear, that is not why I came. I just came to pray with them like you've seen, give them Bibles, and then to ask God why. My questions are directly to God. It's not to anybody because they definitely will say they don't know. If they knew, I'm sure they would have done something about it. I am praying that my presence here today would be a miracle. But that is not the first time you've seen women come in here and they go and the story is the same. What is your visit bringing? How different is it from those who have visited? I am, I am not here just because I want to be here. I am here because I got the instinct that my presence here will bring a plus to it. I did not just come... People, people have come, they brought provisions. I also brought provisions, for Christ's sake. People brought money, I also brought envelopes. But I brought a Bible, I don't think anybody brought that. What, what I have prayed over it and what I have said, I've asked them to also do same in the quiet. And we are praying. For where we have reached now, it is only prayers, my sister. It is only God that would intervene. And with, I mean, with, uh, with a good heart. I am praying that the heart I've brought here, not because I am a minister or I'm a president, but just the fact that I feel I have to touch up something with these families because of my children, these three girls. Uh, Ina is with me on the line. She was with the families today with the former minister and the uh, MP for Agona East. Did she say anything, Ina, about the uh, CID boss' latest comments? She declined to speak about that, Evans, but she made it clear that she disappointed in the 
security service for the way they handled the issue. I want to take a listen to what she I said. I am so, that. so disappointed. It's unbelievable. Do you know what I want? People are born and people die. If these girls are dead, just tell us they are dead. We'll do a funeral. We'll move on. I mean, once you are born, the next thing is for you to live and die. Some people are born, within the next one hour, they die. So, what is the big deal? But my problem is that we don't even know whether they are dead or alive. That is the, I mean, the mystery around the whole thing that I do not, seriously, I don't understand. I wish they would just tell Ghanaians the truth. Tell me, that is what I'm saying. I am here to ask God questions. Not enough of the questions to President Ekufado. He does not have an answer. The CID does not seem to have an answer. The gender minister has been here. She doesn't seem to have an answer. Now I am asking God, God, please give us an answer. Please, I am here to ask you questions on behalf of these families and the women in Ghana. Please, God, give us an answer. We are tired and we are scared. So some people are calling that the CID boss should resign. You had some of the families when you went there yourself. My dear, that's not me. I am not interested. Whether he stays or he resigns, I want the girls, wherever they are, dead or alive. I do not care whether the CID boss stays or leaves. I want to bring in uh, the vice president of Imani Africa. You know, uh, Kofi Bentel uh, was the one who really brought this to national attention. Uh, this has been fought locally uh, in in the region. Uh, demonstrations have been held before, but she took it up and made a big deal of it. And of course, we took it up and had that campaign, Bring Back Our Tidy Girls, has been ongoing for, for several weeks and months now. Uh, and in the wake of this latest pronouncements and what we had from the families today, I just want to bring him in. Uh, Mr. Bento, thank you for your time here on Top Story. Yeah, pardon me, we just had a slight challenge with the line. Can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Bento? Hello? Let's call him back. Let's get a better line to him. We'll also be speaking shortly with Nortidria, who is a clinical psychologist. He's actually on the line with us. Hello, Nortidria. Thank you for your time here on Top Story. Good evening, Evans. Great. Great to have you. Um, we've we've witnessed a heartbreaking moment today when one of the mothers of the three missing girls threw on the floor her cocktail of medication to illustrate how this whole back and forth and the latest uh, pronouncement by the CID boss is how, how all that is affecting her health. And she talks about how her BP has gone up and she's simply traumatized. As a clinical psychologist herself, Define for me what impact this will have on them. Well, Evans, I think I've spoken about this uh, a couple of weeks back, but um, I can identify with the trauma and the you know frustration of the affected and impacted families. Indeed, the whole nation, but directly and specifically the families. I mean, when you hear news after so many months that your daughters have been found and that the security uh, operators or operatives are aware and have identified their location. I mean, that is the best news you could pray for. So to be let down so badly by the system and by, you know, the top pinnacle of the system, uh, I mean, I can't even uh, mobilize the words to express that kind of impact. So, yes, clearly, there's going to be an impact physically, psychologically, whichever dimension you want to look at. This has not been handled well. And we've got to now start taking into consideration the full impact on these families and what kind of support we are giving them as a nation. And what support should they be getting now? Well, you know, all along the families have been clamoring for feedback. Feedback is helpful. It is not a return of their girls. But just knowing what is going on, what is being done, right? That is what you do as a parent. That is what anybody would do. So the feedback is supportive. It actually, actually helps them to cope, you know, despite the, you know, dire situation they are in. Also, we need to be monitoring how they are faring, what they are going through. This is a significantly traumatic uh, uh, event, and it's playing on, and the stressor has been prolonged. It's not as if it began and it ended. It continues, and I think you just spoke to uh, a former minister who talked about closure. 
you know, she didn't want to put it bluntly, but even if we heard that this is the outcome and this is what has happened to the girls, we can now start moving on and making that transition, you know, to closure. So all must be provided and this on various platforms should be, you know, supporting the families in this regard. Is it time to send in a clinical psychologist or a psychologist like yourself to be counseling them as well? Well, I know that uh, there are, I have colleagues in Takradi. I cannot specifically and directly say whether they've had access to this kind of support. Um, we can find out. But it's, it's very important from the onset that we should be looking at what is happening to these families. They have to contend with life uh, as it is on a daily basis and pretend things are normal. And things are not normal. So, yes, it's important that, you know, uh, they receive professional help. Even churches and all that support groups can, you know, uh, come in to help. But like you said, uh, you know, the, 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 the direct stressor or the most recent one is this uh, disastrous, uh, should I say, handling and statement uh, made by the, the police service in, the, in, the, in, the, in terms of what the CID boss said, you know, to, to, to mobilize and actually organize a national event, a press conference, which was actually, as we hear now, based on falsehood, is uh, the height of insensitivity. And I, th- I think we should be looking at how we manage this uh, in detail. And finally, I know you've talked about feedback to the families being so crucial. However, I guess the question then becomes, what sort of feedback should they get? I guess in the police's desire to give feedback, then they give us that, now we know to be false information that the ladies, well, the girls have been found. And so what sort of feedback? I mean, how would you define the feedback that these families who are traumatized should be getting so that it doesn't, it doesn't inadvertently aggravate what right. they're already going I through? I mean, we're handling what we call a critical incident here. So debriefing and well-informed debriefing is critical, essential. So you do not give feedback which, which, which is uninformed or baseless. What it is now is that the families will be wondering, well, what did you know at the time you gave that information out? And what has changed to cause you to now come and say something uh, totally different, you know? So feedback must be well-informed and presented in a manner and a format that, you know, uh, does more good than harm, right? So if you have feedback or you've made some contact, or you've had some breakthrough, there's a way it should be packaged. And I know po- police go through these things. They know how to do this. So it beats my imagination why we would mess up in this way. So the families require feedback which is well uh, packaged and well informed such that it can help them in their day-to-day coping. Nobody is saying that the police should magically produce the girls. There are crimes that remain unsolved for years. But this is, I mean, uh, I, I don't know how to say, but this is not, not the way to go. And I believe that this is causing more, I call it system-induced trauma, where you lean on the system to help you, and the system that is supposed to help you uh, now harms you and further re-traumatizes you. That is what exactly has happened. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nota Dia. He's a clinical psychologist helping us understand uh, what psychological help the families may need tonight. Uh, also, uh, speaking to the latest developments is the uh, former head of the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Opuni Frimpon, who is demanding an apology from the uh, CID boss uh, and, and questioning uh, our leaders and how serious they are with us as a people. We must know that people are hurt. So it's not as simple as, oh, you didn't understand me. She spoke English language that we know where the girls, as I speak to you now, we know where the girls are. That is English language, it's not Greek. So coming back to say that you didn't understand me, by now, either the IGP or somebody should have given apology to some people, some Ghanaians, that sorry, uh, we didn't mean this. So it should not be business as usual. Oh, you don't know, you did not understand me, it's your fault. People are deeply hurt. You, you, I have children, and if this story, and I take the children as my own, please 
Thank God, in fact, this issue has been picked by the media even more than uh, by the security agencies, the way some of you, and consistently. And whatever hope somebody wants to give to us must be sustained. It, it's not be we are up and down, oh, we know them, oh, we are sorry, we, we don't know where that, that kind of thing shouldn't be. And by now, I far seriously uh, want some even serious apology to be given to, to Ghanaians and the p particular uh, 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 families, but uh, our leaders must be more serious with us. For the parent is sadness, well mine is not, it is anger, and I expect you to be angry. The kind of anger that is required for state agencies to act swiftly. In the meantime, we're still looking for the girls. See something, say something. Imagine waking up one morning with a dream with a hope. Maybe you just want to live your life. And then sometime during the day, somebody just kidnaps you and all these dreams are extinguished. This is what has happened to three young girls in the second lead Takrade metropolis. Their families are agonizing, their communities are distraught, and the nation is seriously looking for them. We need your help. If you see something, say something. Our thoughts and prayers at this moment are with the families of the victims and we also call on the relevant state agencies to expedite action, double the effort to ensure the safe return of these girls. Imagine the agony of losing a sister or a dear one. These are three mothers looking for three daughters. Where is the hope? Where is the ray of sunshine? We need to find our girls. Bring back our tardy 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 girls. So where would our tardy girls? Bring back, bring back, bring back, our, back our, tardy our tardy girls. Bring back, bring back, our tardy girls. Well, that's our campaign. Bring back our tardy girls. That's the hashtag. Uh, the don't drop the ball yet. Um, because clearly from where we are, back then when the assurance came that the girls have been found, we know the location, there was excitement, as you heard from the families already. It turns out, you know, six weeks later that that was not true. Let's bring in uh, Mr. Bento's on the line with us. Do we have him? Mr. Bento, thank you for your time here on Top Story. Hello, Mr. Bento. Mr. Bento, can you hear me? We don't seem to have him on the telephone line. It, uh, we'll try and uh, reconnect to him. But don't drop the ball, as I've been saying, um, because this campaign continues to try and um, build public support, put the right pressure uh, to get to the state agencies working as they should to find and bring back these girls. Um, hello, Mr. Bento. Hello, Evans. Do you hear me? I can hear loud and clear, sir. Thank you very much for joining us here on, on Top Story. Of course, I mean, we've been hearing from the families today, uh, reacting to the latest developments um, now that we know that from the CID boss's own mouth that the initial assurance that was given wasn't entirely accurate and that the girls, in fact, have not been found and the police are still working to find them. What's your own reaction to all that has happened since since the weekend? Um, Evans, um, it's sad that we have to have to deal with, you know, the angle that the CID boss brings in. It's really sad. And from the day that I brought this issue up, the point that I sought to raise was how much care do ordinary people get from our state institutions? And every word there is well chosen. How much care do ordinary people get from state institutions? I can go on about what they are entitled to, but let's just ask how much care do they get? Now, after raising it and bringing it up the front burner, we got some attention to these people. Now, here is the quality of attention they are getting. You have a situation where, in a certain case, they are, they are, their situation is being worsened. I'm not interested in bashing Madam Tiwa. I think what we should still be focused on is about care to ordinary Ghanaians. At the least, the family should get some state support in terms of their psychological welfare. At the least, the family should get the first right to information credible government proper information at the least the family should not be subjected to this kind of emotional trauma you know because somebody wants to make a statement 
Okay. Um, as to what should happen to her, I think we should leave it to the police. But that's, the important aspect of that is what is the proper police procedure for handling these matters? What is the standard operating procedure in the Ghana police for handling a thing like this? Is it possible that Madame Tiwa could get up and hold a press conference and put out information without anybody cross-checking, anybody knowing, anybody signing off? My worry is with the policy issues about how these things have to be handled or how they are handled. What is the proper police procedure? What the family is going through, I can only imagine. And I wish or hope that something will be done to hold them together. I, I know you don't want to get into two as bashing, but the families today say they now have had enough. They want her gone and somebody else handling the matter and dealing with them. Is that a, a, a fair call to make? It's an absolutely fair call to make. Look, again, I will urge every listener to put themselves in the shoe of the mother of this child. And you have a very senior police person telling you something. She comes back later and says, I was lying or I was misunderstood. When what she said was clear, you don't want to talk to that person again. You've lost every confidence in the person. In another place, that person will lose their job. Because if they can do it to this person, what else are they messing up at this scale? So for me, honestly, if I were the person involved, if I was the mother, I would not want to see Madame Tiwa. Because she is basically trifling with the life of my child. Did you know or did you not know? If you did not know, why did you say what you said? And if you knew, why would you go on radio and say it? And not come and tell me. And what is all this confusion about? So honestly, it is the simplest thing. In fact, if they didn't even ask for that, the Ghana police must make it a point that they don't put Madame Tiwa, you know, in front of the lady because she will just remind them of, you know, terrible things and increase their trauma. I wonder what is the proper procedure? How come the whole Ghana police does not seem to be getting a handle on this thing? So after Madame Tiwa's problem, nothing has happened. The whole Ghana police does not have anything they can do about this. We don't know what's going on. And that's the reason why, from the beginning, I, I tried to make this a national issue. And even though it's become front page news, Jonathan, you have a campaign on this. This is the quality of handling we are getting. And that's very frustrating. Mr. Bentel, I'm grateful that you joined us. That is uh, Kofi Bentel, Vice President of Imani Africa. You need to join the campaign. Don't lose hope yet. Uh, if we drop the ball, they will drop the ball. Um, and so join the campaign. Hashtag bring back our tidy girls. Oh, no, I'm